What do you say to the song by the church choir? Uh, thank you very much, church choir. The Lord bless you. And what do you say to the story, the children's story, the children's sermon by our guest speaker for children come meeting, Pastor Ivan? What do you say? Uh, up to this time, I don't feel like preaching because pastor has already done it. Pastor, thank you. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, I did say that pastor did not come alone, but he came along with his wife, Nicole. Our sister Nicole, we would be very, we, are, we, we, we can't wait to see you. Uh, may I ask you please to rise up and say hi to God's children. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Nicole. The Lord bless you and keep you. Um, I invite, take this opportunity to invite us to the Holy Communion today. It is Holy Communion Sabbath. And I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. God is good and all the time. Good morning. Good afternoon. And good evening. Thank you very much. We are happy that you are logged in to be blessed with us this particular morning or this afternoon or evening, depending on your time in the place where you are. I invite us to consider the word of God from the book of John chapter 13 for the sake of a holy communion today. John chapter 13 and verse number 1. The Bible says, now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come and that he should depart from this world to his father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The title of our sermon is, he loved them to the end. Praise the name of the Lord. If I'm not asking too much, just speak to your neighbor. Neighbor, he loved them to the end. Neighbor, he loved them to the end. Shall we pray? Our Father and God, we count it a privilege to be in the audience of your word. Because we know circumstances would have kept us away. But you've given us this privilege to be here. And we praise your name for the word that is before us this morning. As we consider this portion of the scripture. And come to take partake of the bread and the wine. The Holy Communion. We pray that the Holy Spirit who guided in the writing of this portion of the scripture will bring us to its understanding. May its designed purpose for its writing be achieved in each one and every one of our lives. Let it bring glory to your name and let it bring salvation to each one and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come and that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. It was the Passover feast celebration. Which is recorded to us by the servant of the Lord John in chapter 13. But during this celebration of the Passover, which was a Jewish festivity that will come every year in commemoration of the deliverance of the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt to the land of promise. 
this particular day, this celebration will acquire a new meaning. And so as Jesus gathered together with his disciples in the upper room to celebrate this feast, uh, the Bible lets us know that uh, he loved them to the very end. You will be happy to know that the one who has written the account that we are reading is the Apostle John. The Apostle John is known to write so much about love. And here again, he brings us to this great topic that he loves most about love because he had seen this love and this love had left an impact in his life. John starts this chapter by letting us know that he loved them to the end and in the subsequent verses he will demonstrate to us how he loved them to the end even to the extent of washing their feet. Allow me to say that John is very keen to let us know that something was already happening to Jesus. Number one, Jesus knew that his time had come to go back to the Father. Uh, Jesus knew that all had been given to him. But this notwithstanding, John tells us that he still lingered around. John seems to call our attention to the understanding that if Jesus was like what we would be as human being, he will not be doing what Jesus was doing. He says that even though Jesus knew that his time to go had come and that all had been given to him and also true that those whom he had loved had shown very limited appreciation of his love. He had every justification to just leave and go. But John says this was not the case. He lets us know that Jesus had this kind of love that was endless. That Jesus had this love that was immutable. Had this love that was relentless. And such a love that even the reality of going to the glory and the heartlessness of the hearts of those whom he had loved could not stop this love. And so he says he loved them to the end. John, therefore, is letting us know that Jesus' love was everlasting love. Love that cannot be stopped by good things that are happening the one who is to extend this love. This love cannot be stopped even by the heartlessness of the one who is supposed to be the object of this love. It is still continues on and on and on. This is what Jesus did. Jesus, the Bible will let us know that his love is indeed everlasting. No wonder the Bible in the book of Proverbs would describe God and his love as a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Uh, in the book of Psalms chapter 37 and verse 28, the word of God says, you can read together with me Psalms 37 and verse 28. Psalms 37 verse 28. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. Uh, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The psalmist will let us know in this psalm that the love of God 
uh, preserves those ones whom he loves and we see it expressed in the text that John gives us in John 13 verse 1. Probably the book of Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah 49 and verse 14 and 17 puts it better. Come with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 14 to 17. Isaiah 49, verse 14 and 14 to 17, the Bible says, But Zion says, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. Your sons shall make haste. Your destroyers and those who laid you west shall go away from you. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah lets us know of the love that God had for the children of Israel who are complaining that he had forsaken them. But Isaiah says that no way, this was their word. But the truth of the matter was that God loved them. He loved them even more than a mother will love her own child. He cannot forsake them. And Jesus, in the book of John chapter 13, verse 1, John tells us that that kind of love is demonstrated in Jesus loving his disciples and loving them to the very end. So much that even though he knew that all had been given to him and he had the justification to now just let go those whom he had labored to draw to himself but didn't seem to be responding positively, he did not let them to perish. He continued to give them additional opportunity by continuing to love them a little more. Uh, that neither entrance in glory nor the heartlessness of, men, of heartlessness of men could take away the love that he had for them. He loved them to the very end. Our friends, in the name of Jesus, allow me to observe that if ever any one of us will get lost, it will not be because God did not love us. It will not be because he was not relentless in his love. We only can get lost because we moved. John lets us know that it is only us who can be able to move, but God never moves from us. Jesus demonstrates his consistency, his relentless love for the disciples in hanging around even to the very last minute when he knew that he was already going to the Father, he was already going to glory and that everything had been given to him. If he was a human being, he would say, I have tried my best, but they could not be benefit from the best that I've given them. I think I can stop here and go my way. John lets us know that he continued to love them even to the extent of going to demonstrate that love by washing their feet. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, if any one of us will ever get lost, it will not be because God does not love it will not be because he is not relentless in his love, but it will be because we were not touched probably by this love and this love did not make sense for us and we moved. And truth be told, whereas Jesus labored this much and there are those ones who accepted him, there are those ones who are not touched by this love and they walked away from this love. It is demonstrated by the action of Zacchaeus, the, the action of Iscariot, Judas, who 
was not touched by that love. It did not make sense for him. And he walked away from this love and went away. This love is such a love that does not demand uh, for a payback. It did not demand a payback from Judas who will walk away. But he was given sufficient of this love only that it did not make sense for him. And so he went away and walked away from this love, this relentless love, this everlasting love, this endless love, this relentless love that stayed close even to the very last minute. I personally love God for his love. Loving the unlovable and staying long enough to give us chance to respond to him. I personally will want to give my life to him who labored for my salvation and surrender to his lordship. Friends, in the name of Jesus, allow me to say that Judas might have had a reason not to be touched by this love. And one of the reasons that is given to us by the Bible is that they had an expectation of who a Messiah would be. Judas didn't seem to find in Jesus that Messiah. Judas and the rest of the disciples and the rest of the Jewish land looked forward to a Messiah who was coming to free them from the Roman bondage. They looked forward to this charismatic leader who will be able to charismatically work out the deliverance of the children of Israel for the Roman dominion and oppression. But this didn't seem to be coming out from Jesus Christ. I want to submit that this could have been the reason why Judas did not see value in Jesus' love. Because his perception and his expectation of what the Messiah would be was misplaced. He was looking for a political emancipator. But Jesus and the Messiah was to come as one who will save humanity from sin. The whole entire Jewish nation had read their scripture, but the understanding of the Messiah that will come was skewed. They looked for a political Messiah, not a spiritual Messiah. No wonder they lost it. Could it be that it is possible that in our interaction with the word of God and what the Messiah is, we come with our own mindset and as a result of the mindset that we have, it becomes difficult for us to be able to appreciate what Jesus presents himself to be as the savior, our savior, a spiritual savior, savior from the bondage of sin. Probably we are looking for a savior from economical uh, frustration and social frustration, but Probably Jesus doesn't seem to be turning out to be like that. And we miss out on Jesus Christ. This, I propose, is one of the reasons why Judas missed out on Jesus Christ. And he was not alone. Up until now, the Jewish nation is still looking forward to receive a Messiah. Because they are looking for a particular Messiah. There are people who miss out on the love of God. Because they are... Their mindset is placed elsewhere than what the Messiah comes for as a savior, a spiritual Messiah, a savior, a savior of humanity from the bondage of sin into freedom in God. And this is what Jesus came to do. And so Judas loses out and he walks away from him. Today, all of us Jesus will let us know that he is still loving as he was loving and he will still continue to love. The choice to respond to him is ours. Either to respond in surrender to his lordship or remain in the lordship of ourselves or allow some other things to be our lord and our master 
or allow Jesus Christ to be our Lord and our Master. The Judas did not surrender to this Lordship. I personally, in my opportunity of interacting with the Word of God, I have loved Jesus Christ and I surrender to his Lordship. I welcome him into my life to be the Lord of my life. Allow him to have his way in my life. I don't know about you. The, the, the freedom is yours. Either to surrender or to walk away. Judas walked away. And he went and he lost it. Like the disciples were given opportunity to stay and surrender. We are also given opportunity to stay and surrender or to walk away. I don't know about you, but for me, I surrender. I say, Jesus, you are the Lord. I surrender to your Lordship. Thank you for coming for my salvation. I give you my life. I pray that this will be your position too, to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And then Jesus, of course, after he had demonstrated this love relentlessly, even including washing Judas himself, he, he told them, have you seen what I've done? Do the same for one another. Go serve one another. I take this opportunity to invite all of us to foot washing, to go and serve one another, to demonstrate the love that Jesus has for us towards one another. I welcome us to the service of humility, a service of serving one another. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for your great love. We thank you that you love relentlessly and you loved your disciples to the very end. You loved them even though they did not deserve. And you demonstrated your unconditional love and your non-relentless love by washing, including him whom you knew that was going to betray you, to give him an opportunity to surrender his life to you. Thank you, dear Father, for loving this way. Thank you for your love. As your children who live at this time and in this age, we are grateful for loving us this way and we surrender to your Lordship. Thank you that in your love, you demonstrated this love by washing the feet of your disciples. Much as it was a tradition, it would have been done by a servant, but you decided to do it to give them an example of love and an example of service. Now, as we break to go and foot wash one another, we pray that your love will reign supreme in our lives and it will be the reason for service for one another, that you will cause us to serve you and serve one another, that you will help us to consider others better than ourselves and go out of our way for the benefit of others. May this be our experience as we take time to do this service of humility, to demonstrate your, your invitation to us to serve each other and to love one another. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.